It's terrible. It's like telling you to buzz off, you know. It's just like... <laughs> oh, very cool. Great to have you guys with us this morning. Wow. I, I, my intention is to speak about an open heaven this morning. And, um, you know, I've been praying into that, obviously. Um, this morning I came in here and I went... I got a text, actually, way before I came here uh, from one of our interns, Charlotte. Where's Charlotte? Uh, Charlotte, I got a, something. She's probably up working somewhere. Um, just where, where, where are you, Charlotte? She's amazing, Charlotte. And uh, she just... She just, there was a Facebook post, I think it was, and just uh, said, you know, get down here, it's great. You know, there's, a, there's like an open heaven. I'm going, that's, that's the truth, man. I've been praying into that. It's good to, it's good to do that. Amen. Who, who needs an open heaven over their life? Yeah. Amen. It's good to, good to do all of that. We're going we're gonna to talk about that this morning. There's some PowerPoints and stuff up, and, um, and uh, so that's really good. It's really good. I like you. Um, and I've known you for, I've known, how long have I known these guys for? Since they were born, Rex. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, it's ages now. Ages. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shannon, will you pop up here and give her a, the word of the Lord? That would be really great. Just bring the microphone. Yeah, that's right. Because I know that she's ready to go. She's like a primed hand grenade, this girl. Did you bring, it, bring that microphone. Bring that, bring that microphone. Chuck that microphone up here, will you? Chuck is probably a bad word to... to yeah, that's right. <laughs> Honor the soundies and then throw the microphones around. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Just feel all prophetic over you this morning. Thank you, Lord. That you, when you play, when, the, when you begin to play like that, and I notice there's been a shift in your playing over recent weeks, and I've never told you this, but prophetically I want to say to you that as you begin to play, that the, it is not going to be uncommon for people to be so touched by the Lord that they're going to be immobilized. And in that immobility, it's like, a, it's like someone's put them on the operating uh, table and that God is going to rewire parts of their thinking and parts of even of their understanding and I see that even as God has done that with you but you would minister out of that and there's just something coming off the keyboards this morning and um, and I just so want to play with that volume control there that says and there's a big sticky thing slider here and I just want to push it right up you know like that I know I shouldn't do that but just give her some sound this morning because there's a sound coming off these keyboards that that uh, just just that people need to get. If you want to get it, just lift your hands this morning because there's healing in this. Amen. There's an open heaven in this. And uh, that's fabulous. And the prophet called for a musician and when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. Thank you, Lord. Go, Shannon. Thank you, Jesus. I just see God just completely unraveling you at the moment. I saw you kind of just standing there and you're all wrapped up a bit like a mummy but it was like with a ribbon just like completely around you and I just saw that coming undone and just unraveling around you yeah. and God's unraveling at the moment he's undoing stuff he's undoing um, fears and doubts and mind shifts and I just see as this ribbon just it's, it unravels around you and it falls out it just it's like a um, a butterfly coming out of its Jesus. cocoon it's just standing there, all beautiful and the, it ends right about the sound there's a sound that your life Jesus. carries not just when you play but there's a sound of your life that is, that is touching people's lives it's igniting something within them and they, it's drawing them to you and it's drawing them to God and I just see that as they as they draw near to you there's, like, there's something about you there's something about you that's a sound that is going to proceed it's going to go before you. Thank it's the sound you, Lord. of the Lord. It's going to go before you. And I see it just going out and touching not ones and twos, not tens and twenties of people, but like hundreds, generations of people. This sound is a sound that is igniting a generation wow. to rise and stand. Wow. And it's causing them to stand up. And you go, know wow. what? The Lord is calling. The Lord is the calling. The Lord is calling. Wow. And I just see you just Thank rising. You, and don't Thank be afraid you, to shine. Don't be afraid to be yeah, who it is right. that God has called you to be. People will good try and word. put you in a box. They'll try and good put word. you in a cocoon and go, oh, at least you're creative, so you're like this. And a new play piece, so you're like this. But God is saying that, uh, I created you. There is a lot of depth to you. There is a lot that I have placed within you. And um, and there's, there's things that are dreams and visions that I have placed within you that you aren't even aware of yet, that you haven't even dreamt yet. But yeah. I've placed them within you for a time. Yeah. And he's unraveling you. And as he unravels you, and as you just become so completely undone yeah. by the Lord, wow. I just see you being completely undone How in his presence, just overwhelmed with love 
and, and just hungry for him, hungry for his word, hungry for his presence, and, and just so in love with him. And as I see that happening, just come on. Oh, there's just Thank he's just Lord. revealing greater yeah. just greater facets of himself within you. And it's beautiful. It's it's Amen. it's so beautiful. Thank you, Thank Lord. You, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Elise Scott, she's amazing. Let's give her a hand. It's like amazing. Thank you. You can go now. <laughs> that's been fabulous. Oh, that's very, very cool. This is uh, this is a really a prophetic church. I remember a friend of mine coming once, and uh, and um, and uh, he was speaking for us, and uh, uh, we were up in the prayer meeting and praying and all of those kind of things, and he joined us, and and uh, and then just after that, uh, um, as he was heading down into the auditorium, uh, he got I think seven prophecies. From, from seven different people um, who weren't ganging up on him. They just, every time he passed someone, they say, oh, I just feel the Lord wants to say something to you, you know. And uh, I felt embarrassed. Um, he was one of my mentors, and I just wanted to get him to the front. I was, like, fixed on doing what I'm doing, and, you know, I was a little bit more, you know, weird in those days. And, um, and so I've become a lot more relaxed a- about all of that. And, uh, but I was just working the plan and the program and all those kind of things, which I thought leaders should do. And, and I, I realized I was hedging God out. And, um, and so it was really funny. So I apologized to him. <laughs> so, look, I'm really sorry. You know, that's great words, but, you know, I'm really sorry you got so many of them. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I really did say that. And he said, I wouldn't have expected anything else from a church that you led. And I went, wow. And so that's interesting because what you carry in your cell group or in your, you know, whatever, it's part of the DNA of this house. So this is a prophetic house. It's a house, it's a place of healing uh, and, and people of restoration, all of those kind of things. We've had those stories over the years. I remember, I remember sitting um, at a function downstairs and an old bloke came in from around the community somewhere and um, he, he said, I got healed here and I was quite excited because we were going for healing, you know, and um, just seeing some, some things and not seeing others and just going, come on, you know, we want to see. And, and I'm always praying for miracles and breakthrough and all of that. And we're seeing more now than we have done and, and so that's the that's a great thing you know so we're just like let's push into that and uh, I remember him saying I got healed here I got my eyes healed and I went wow that's awesome like you know blindness as well and uh, I said well you know was that in one of my meetings you know, and um, and uh, uh, and he goes what? no no it was like when they operated on me here and I went what and uh, he said this this used to be a hospital I went, you're kidding me. And I, this was the Will Exchange building that, you know, that I, you know, amen, we you know, leased it and bought it and changed it and all those kind of things. But before this was here, there was a hospital here. And he said, I was operated on here and, uh, and, got, and, and I got healed uh, here because the surgeon operated on some things in my eyes. And you know what? As in the natural, so in the spirit. And so I, I've just continued to claim that. I'm going, if this is the, the base of this, if you like, if the DNA, even in the ground of this, is a hospital, then, then let's go for that. Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's go for healing. Let's have divine operations. Yeah. And, and so that's really cool. So anyway, I wanted to chat about all of that this morning a little bit with the, the whole area of, uh, of being under an open heaven and um, you know, a little bit of what that is and, and, and what it's not and just living under the reality of that. Because all of us can live under an open heaven. And, um, and so there's a great scripture. It says, when Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. <laughs> he said, I'm the one that needs to be baptized by you, he said. Why are you coming to me? And Jesus said, well, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. And so John agreed to baptize him. And after his baptism, Jesus came. And uh, we've got a Z and an S in the baptism. I never noticed that before. But anyway, and, uh, and so don't worry about it. All the grammar people who spotted that, please raise their hands. That's, you can do both. I know that. But I just I want, to know, I want to know all those grammar people. Where are you? Because there'll be altar calls for you later. And that's awesome. Fantastic. That's right. And so <laughs> baptize them. After his baptism with an S, Jesus came up out of the water and the heavens were open. Let's say that together. The heavens were we're open. All right. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly beloved Son who gives me great joy. And, uh, and so here, here's this here. Now, there is no indication anywhere in the Scriptures that the heavens has ever been closed. Go and find it. 
You go, fine, if I'm wrong, tell me, and I'll apologize and, and repent and all of those kind of things. But when, when, the, when the heavens opened, when the heavens, the heavens opened and the, and the voice of God spoke out, it began to set a precedent because the, the heavens were open momentarily from time to time. Remember Jacob wrestling with the angel. Pastor Garth said that this morning and, uh, you know, he goes, you want to you fight? You want to fight with the angel of the Lord? You're like, yeah, oh, you would do that, you wouldn't you? <laughs> I was out there with the meat guns and men thing last night and I saw people out there going, you know, the more shots that were fired, the more feral they were becoming. And... Uh, and they would, they would take on the army of the Lord, you know, they could, you could hear that, especially when they're bringing out the big guns and, and all of that. But the, Jacob, you know, he said, I'm going to wrestle with God. And, 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 and he did that and, he, and God blessed him. But there was an open heaven there momentarily, and we'll just touch that in a, in a moment. But uh, that's, that's an amazing. There's an open heaven and it has never been shut since. And we need to understand that. The interesting thing is that people like John G. Lake, John G. Lake was a missionary evangelist and he started the healing rooms uh, that are around the world today. I've been in them. Uh, I spoke in the healing rooms in Santa Maria in California uh, just a year ago and uh, that was phenomenal and, uh, and, and, and got to know Rick and Laurie Taylor and all those. But that was started by uh, an evangelist who went out, failed and just destroyed his family just about and then came back to the States and then went out again. Who wants a second go at that? And, um, and went out, and this time he went out, they said he was so phenomenal uh, that, uh, that the power of God was so on him that they said there was an open heaven over his ministry for 20 miles. And if you managed to get into that zone over that 20 mile radius where John G. Lake was either preaching or ministering in some way, then, then you, the, 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 the possibility of you getting healed or touched or having a miracle in some way was, uh, was just exponentially increased. And, uh, and, and so, so much so that they were having, uh, I think it was a bubonic, no, a typhoid, it was typhoid at the time. And uh, they had closed all the hospitals down, they had isolated people. And he walked into the hospital one day and says, I want to pray for them all. And they said, you're not allowed in here. Uh, and if you come in here, you won't be allowed out. And he said, um, you, you don't have to worry about me. He said, I, I'm impervious to this. And, um, and uh, they, they were mocking him. And uh, they're saying, I'm seeing people healed all the time. To prove it, he said, I want you to put some, get some, get some typhoid. You've got some active typhoid in the laboratory here. And they went, yes, we have. I want you to put it under my skin and under a microscope and watch what happens. And when they put the sample on the back of his skin and then the, the, the thing withered and died as he went on his hand, he said, now can I pray? And he went in there and prayed for people. And there was not only a mass healing in, in that place, and that was all backed off. There was a phenomenal revival. Church planting all around the world. John G. Lake, 20 mile open heaven. Who wants that in their life? Come on, Shaba. There was a, a guy called, uh, uh, Shaba is Latin for I want an open heaven. And uh, so the, uh, the, 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 there's a guy called Carlos Anacondia. And some of you have met him. I've actually got a handkerchief at home that he prayed for for me because I couldn't go to the meeting. So someone took a handkerchief and said, would you pray? Because he was an Argentinian revivalist. But um, his meetings were crazy because when he was having them in a tent, such was the open heaven uh, over his life that he expected. Because the problem is we don't expect it sometimes. You know, we go, oh, there's no open heaven over my life. Have you seen me? I'm so miserable. Yeah, well, I understand that. So, you know, if you get rid of the misery, you know, maybe the, the open heaven will come. You know, let's, let's look up and let not look down and, and let's begin to increase that and, and, and all of that however and so um so Carlos Anacondia is preaching and that and and there were city corporation buses in Argentina all around there and so so for example we're preaching here I'm Carlos you know and, and uh you know there's power of gods flying all over the place and and they've got another building just outside this auditorium where all the demon possessed people go so where you go some of you come on all right, no one's moving. We're all pretty good today. That's awesome. But they had tents. They would carry people out and go to the tent because they'd deal with them separately. And you could hear the screaming from a distance, which was awesome. And, but the problem was that the zone or the open heaven around what he was doing was so open that people in buses and taxis that would drive uh, like, like five or six blocks away, they'd drive past. They'd start manifesting if they'd be involved in witchcraft, which there were a lot of in Argentina. And, and so they begin to start manifesting demons and uh, or they'd start vomiting because they were sick or all that kind of thing and the taxi drivers and the buses knew what to do what they do is they just take them and drop them off at the tent outside and uh, the tent of meeting and they drop them off there and uh, they'd just I guess find their own way home but when they did they were healed that was pretty cool that's that's the power of an open heaven and so it's never been closed 
It's never been closed. Check, check this out here. Um, there's, a, there's a, whoops, my, my pad, my iPad's died. Yeah, there we go. No, let's bring it up. Oh, and, the, and I'm locked out. Here we go. Look at that. And, and so one of the first things, one of the first martyrs uh, that, that we had in the Bible, whose name is Stephen, and uh, one of the sound guys, and, um, and the Jewish leaders were so infuriated by Stephen's accusation. What, what Stephen was doing was actually just which was telling the story of how he got saved and actually the background story to how Jewish people had been told for years and years and years about the goodness of God. And, and when the leaders heard that, when the religious leaders of the day heard that, they were so infuriated, they shook their fists at him in rage. Turn to someone. No, I don't do that. No, it's just like... And, 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 but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit... Now, you can imagine that, eh? You're in a situation where people are, like, gnashing their teeth and, like, really angry, and, but you're filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. Why did he do that? Because there was an open heaven. He wasn't... It, many people read this and they go, oh, that's because he, he was a martyr and he was dead. No, he's not dead yet. He's still, he's still in the middle of the accusations and the angry, angry faces. Remember Jesus said, even if you are brought towards the judges, before the judges, before uh, situations of accusations, that I will put the words in your mouth and I will begin to, I will begin to you know, make declaration, if you like, through you. And that's exactly what began to happen here. He said he saw the glory of God and he saw Jesus sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, this is, the guy, this is awesome, eh? He, you know, they're all, ah! and he's going, look, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's hand. Oh, I see the supernatural right now. I see the miraculous. It's opening up. It's like we've always longed for. This is what we were born for. And here it is. It's just amazing. Come on. We're just like, this is what we want. This is what we were worshiping about this morning. Here we go. Aren't you excited? They, they put their hands on their heads. They put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They're trying to drown him out. They rushed at him and they dragged him out of the city and they began to stone him. And I, I spent some time yesterday, I was hugely distracted yesterday by this whole open thieving thing. I was thinking about you, I was thinking about me, I was thinking about my home, I was thinking about your home, I was thinking about this church, I was thinking about our city, our nation, all of those things. And I think, like, God, God, I was just pondering and musing and, you know, all of those things. And, and, and I, I just wrote a statement, and, and this is it, religion will always cover its ears to the supernatural because it's a realm it can't control. And many times, and I've seen this over the years, I was brought up in church, I mean, I, I thought my mother had me in church, because uh, the first waking memory I had was being in church. It was, it, was, it was hilarious, you know, sleeping on the pew or going to sleep in church or whatever that was and going home. And, 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 and you know, I've been involved in Christianity with churches. I mentor churches. I'm, I'm away doing some mentoring this week in Hamilton with a church that I'm uh, responsible for and uh, all of those kind of things. So we're doing all of that and, and seeing that. And this is one thing I think, religion always covers its ears to the supernatural. And I find even with Pentecostal and spirit-filled people, you know, they, they go, oh, we don't want to hear. We're, we're happy in our charismatic renewal. We're happy in our Jesus movement. We're happy in, in the wee touch of God that we got in 1953. I'm not. And neither should you be. Because God is always moving. We can get fixed in concrete. We can begin to put memorials down, say this far and no more. But God is always on the move and always has been. He's always writing new songs. Why don't we sing the old hymns? Because some of them are rubbish. <laughs> Honestly, in the concert, we will bear our parts. You can bear your parts in the concert, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Have at it. That's a line from a hymn, a well-known hymn. And we need to understand sometimes, we need to look at our songs, even our modern songs, and saying, come on, because come on, honestly, Christians don't tell lies, they sing them. Yeah, that's right. So, what about another heaven? Here's, here's Peter. The next day, Cornelius' messages were nearing town. Peter went up into the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry, but while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance and he saw the heaven open and something like a large sheet was let down by four corners and the sheet were all kinds of animals, reptiles, birds, and a voice said to him, 
get up, Peter, kill and eat them. And they were all non-kosher food. Wow. And, 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 you know, here he is, God, again, speaking to the early church out of an open heaven. And he said, oh, well, you know, don't you think the heavens should open and rather have a vision? No, no, no. We're dealing in a realm of the supernatural. We're dealing in a realm now where heavens may physically open. There's people that testify all around the world that Sunday they're in worship and the roof of the building just came off. I was in worship this morning and I looked up at the roof and I went, are you going to come off? Because I was so expectant. Because I've been in this for the last 24 hours and, the, and, and this week and I'm just going, actually, I think the roof might come off this morning. And I felt it. I felt something here shift. I, 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 I knew that there'd been, you know, something shifting in the, in the spirit for the week. And, and, you know, there's new courage coming back into leadership. There's new courage coming back into the people of God. There's new, I'm not just talking about our church. I'm talking about the church. I mean, I'm hearing that, the, you know, religion will always close its ears, will always shut its eyes, will always shout to, to drown it out. But there are supernatural church arising again and say God can do anything. And, and, and where people, I tell you, it's great. I heard a great message from Tony McDonald this morning. One of the things she says, failed ministries are due to failed prayer. I went, holy smokes, write that down. She said that's what she's, some of the things that they're doing in the States right now and just learning uh, with Patricia King and others. She said, you know, that they, she said, we're praying all the time. We're just praying all the time. She said, I picked up the phone the other day and she said, I just about spoke to the person in tongues because I'm in tongues all the time. I thought, that's phenomenal. It's an open heaven. Who wants an open heaven? Yeah, yeah. Jackie Pullinger, 15 minutes a day, every day. She began, to, she began to pray in other tongues. Now, if that's not your deal, that's okay. We can pray for you. And, uh, and, but, but just ask God to give you the breakthrough in that because you're not praying out of your head anymore. You're praying out of your spirit. And Jackie Pullinger did that in the walled city in Hong Kong where all of the triads and all of the drug taking and all of the prostitution was there. People went in there and never came out again and they never found them. It was a terrible place. And she went as a British white girl, as a young lady. She went in there and she said, they felt the strategy the Lord gave her was to pray in tongues for 15 minutes a day and then go and hand out gospel tracts in the walled city. She had the leaders of triad gangs come up to her and say, we're going to kill you. We're going to rape you. We're gonna, we, they will never find you. And, and, and she just went back every day, every day, and just shared the gospel with them. And, and you know, that walled city doesn't exist anymore today. It's completely eradicated. I've been there. It's just, just not there anymore. And she married one of the triad leaders. One of the leading drug guys, actually. And she said, that's what God can do. There's nothing impossible for God. Nothing impossible. Whatever's happening in your family, God wants to put an open heaven over your family. It's phenomenal. And then look at this. And then, and then Nathaniel, like this is, this is one of Jesus' followers because Jesus says, oh, I can see you, Nathaniel, sitting under the tree. I, I, you know, you're a man without guile. And Nathaniel says, Rabbi, you're the son of God. You're like the king of Israel. You just gave me a word of knowledge. You're amazing. Like, let's have a wee camp around that. And Jesus says, really? You think that's cool? He says, do you, do you, believe, do you believe this just because I told you that you were sitting under a fig tree? Do you, do you, you'll see greater things than this. You'll, you'll, you'll see greater things than that. What, word of knowledge? What? Healings? Pfft. Let's get some people raised up. Let's see some great things happening in all of this. As we'll see greater things. This You will see the heavens open. You, 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 and the angels of God are going up and down on the Son of Man. They're, they're, they're going up and down. the one, and, and, and He's the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. If, if, we're not, if we're not hooked into the stairway this morning, if we're, if we're not walking on the way in the stairway, if we're not coming and going in our daily accounts with God, with Jesus, then, then, then come on, church. You know, we, we don't have an open heaven. We've got to have a relationship with Jesus in, in all of this. And, then, and, and, and here's another reason. I, this is, I just threw this one in because you know, Garth mentioned it this morning. I couldn't believe it. But Malachi says this. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord. Say, if you do. If you do, he says, uh, this is the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try me, put me to the test. In other words, prove me now. And, and, and you know, uh, we're, you know, like, I, I remember... <laughs> I remember we got a tax return once and uh, we were up in Otaki and, you know, it was like, oh my goodness, this is, we needed this. 
You know, we really did. We were on a really tight budget. We had three little boys. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just crazy. And this, this money comes, you know. And I, I think at the time it was like about 400 bucks, you know, something. I was like, it was like, oh, my goodness. It was like 4,000 bucks, like 400,000. It was like, we really did need it. And, and we showed it, and the kids got excited. We go, oh, what's happening? You know, we've got some money from the government, which is awesome. And um, they love us so much. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so we looked at it. And I remember Jonathan, our middle son, uh, he was looking at it because he's making a lot of money now. And uh, he's, 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 he's our moneymaker in the family, you know, it's like, wow. And, and he's, I remember little Jonathan looking at it, and he goes, wow. Mum's going to give it away, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, she is, Jonathan. <laughs> but we're going to have enough left for KFC. How about that? And he goes, yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, so, uh, but, but that was the culture. You know, we, 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 started to, we started to put a culture of generosity in our kids. And that same boy, I remember going around, you know, he'd, he'd been to university, he'd done some great training, uh, but he was painting, he was working for a painting firm. He had a Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, but he wanted to work for Niwa. He wanted to work specifically for a little group of scientists around in Wellington, around in Marangi Bay. And, and, uh, and so he was painting one day, and he said, I'm going to go and ask them for a job. And he went around there, and uh, he banged on the door. And, uh, and there's only about nine people at work there, and someone came out and said, hi, how are you? He said, look, I'm Jonathan Wright, and uh, I, I want a job. And they said, well, we're not hiring. He goes, yeah, I know that, but um, I'll work for you uh, for free. And they went, what? Go away. And, uh, and, and so, you know, he kept on coming back. He kept on knocking on the door until he got right up the food chain to Dr. Um, someone or other, and uh, and they, yeah, yeah, <laughs> doctor, yeah, and uh, and so he, he was talking to him, and he said he, he said look, look, I will work for you free. I'm a I'm a trained lab technician. I, I can I can do I can clean benches. I can sweep floors. I want to work in this environment. And look, I, I'll, I've got to, I'm painting at the moment. I've got to pay the flat rent, all those kind of things. But I'll work for you for free. A principle that we taught our kids, because if you if you sow, you will reap. All right, so he gave what he had, which was only his skills. And uh, at the end of a series, where they put him through some training and all those kind of things. But at the end of that time, what happened was that uh, they came and says, we can't give you a job. And so in the, mid in, the, in the midst of all of that, he got appointed as an science officer for a ship that was going down to the Ross Sea. And so he got that job. He was in one week of training, and the people at Niwa rang him. And they said, we are creating a new position, and we want you to reply. And, and, uh, and, and he went from there, and while he was there, he, he got married, he had, he had a couple of kids, and he got his master's degree, and he still worked, he did all of that part-time and worked for them as well, and now is doing a phenomenal job. Why? Because he applied the principles of giving and generosity. And there's an open heaven. We just play for our kids now and say, Lord, bless them, because they have applied those things. Because there is a law uh, that, you know, if, you jump, if I jump off the stage, I will hit the floor. Yeah. All right, it's called the law of gravity. You know, there's, there's a law of sowing and reaping. There's a law when we, if we bring our tithes into the storehouse, there will be food in my temple. If you do, if you do, the Lord says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I love what Garth said this morning, because when those windows were opened in Genesis, there was a deluge. There was an absolute deluge. And then, and then finally, you know, we, we, we just, you know, we have to get to that point. Where, where actually our redemption comes from the Lord. I need a keyboardist with me right now. There will be strange signs in the sky, the moon, the stars, and, and here on earth the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming on the earth, for the power of heaven will be shaken. We live in crazy times even now. I mean, this is describing somewhat of what we are seeing around the world at the moment. The United States had 49 states with snow in it recently. Guess which the state was that didn't have snow? Who said, who said Alaska? <laughs> Someone near him, smack him. I don't care if he's an elder. <laughs> Hawaii, that's right, well done. It's, 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 the, and they'll be shaking. Then verse 27 says, Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when you all these things begin to happen, stand up and look. And the encouragement from the Lord is this, for your salvation is near. And I, I'm, I'm encouraging people everywhere I go today. Come on, come on, we need to look higher than we've been looking before. We've just been doing the stuff around here. And I believe in this year, there's been a lot of limitations. Over, there's a year of faith 
that we are entered into. There's a year of, I love that song, Oceans. You know, as we step out upon the waters. You know, I think there is a fragility about staying locked in to the same old, same old. But I think there's a robustness about standing out on the sea of faith and being able to see, come on, God, make it hard on God and make it easy on you. Because <laughs> He's God and you're not. And the greatest thing that there is is an open heaven, is that when there's an open throne room, there is an open heaven. Jesus, when Jesus died and He cried out, it is finished. The temple curtain was torn in two, never to be sewed up again. The heavens were open, never to be closed again. And the invitation for every person, Christian or non-Christian, is to say, will you come and walk with Jesus? Because a lot of Christians don't walk with Jesus. They cover their ears and they shout and they become religious, locked in an old move of God, locked in hypocrisy, locked in gossip, locked in whatever it might be. And then God says, come on, I'm coaxing you out of your cave. You need to live under an open heaven. Live out of, outside of criticism and in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm done. But if you want to live under an open heaven this morning, I don't want you, anybody standing at the moment. If you, as you want to live under an open heaven this morning, I want you to think about this for a moment. Come on, let's just, let's just close our eyes, bow our heads for a moment. What's stopping you? What's stopping me? Sin will stop you. Unforgiveness will stop you. Meanness will stop you. And so this morning we come, Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you that when you open the heavens, in fact, the, the word is when they were torn open. I love that. Because the, the whole picture is that whilst the heavens were torn open, the curtain also was torn down. And we are able to enter in and out of the throne room. And so we come boldly this morning, Lord. We come boldly in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we come with all of our stuff. Every one of us. I don't care if you've been a Christian for a hundred years. Or if you've never known Jesus as your Savior. This morning the invitation is to take a step upon waters this morning. Take a step before Him and to Him. And this morning, Lord, we ask that you'd forgive us. You'd heal us. You'd restore us. You'd revive us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what I want you to do, I just want, I don't want people looking around. As the musicians all come back, we're going to sing that song, Oceans, just as we close. I want you to stand when you want to, to indicate not to anyone around you, but to God saying, I need the heavens opened over my life. I want to live in that space. I, I, when I was at Pensacola a few years ago, we stayed with Dr. John Hurston, a famous missionary. He planted Yongi Cho's church and they hosted Dale and I a couple of times actually, became great friends. He broke bread with us. He had communion with us in his lounge. And John said to me, John and Maxine, lovely wife. And uh, she, they said to us, what do you want, Ian? What can we pray for? And I said, I just want an open heaven over my life. And he laughed at me. He said, I'm not going to pray for that. I said, why, why wouldn't you, you mean missionary? Why wouldn't you pray for that? And he says, because Ian, you got one when you got saved. You need to start living under it. And so why don't we agree that you start living under it like you've never lived under it before? And so we have stories like Jonathan's story. We have stories of breakthrough in our family. Incredible. Dale has a Y in her name today simply because she had breakthrough. Do you know how much it costs legally to put one letter in your name when you're not born with that letter? That's a lot of money. <laughs> she changed that from D-A-L-E to D-A-Y-L-E because Y stands for Yahweh because he put a memorial in her life at that point to say that I have finished the abuse, the pain. Dale said, I needed a hinge point in my life. This is her story, not mine. 
but I need an open heaven. Now she had one beforehand, but sometimes we need to make prophetic acts. Wow, there is an open heaven over this place right now. I can feel it. Father, thank you. I know it's there. Thank you, Jesus. This is your altar call. If you want to stand, that's fine. Thank you, Jesus. just say thank you right now. Come on, just begin to thank Him. Lord, thank you for an open heaven over my my family, over my finances. Lord, thank you for an open heaven over my life. Lord, increase my borders and my boundaries. Lord, let there be a, come on, can you believe for a kilometre around you? (laughs) Get people in the zone. Get people in a miracle zone. Why don't you build that in the Spirit? Father, right now, we just say thank you. Lord, we walk out right now of this place today. And we walk into our mission field. We walk, Lord, as people of sons and daughters of the living God. Of the living God. We walk out, Lord, with an open heaven over our lives. We walk out with a cry of the cross that says it is finished. And with a mandate to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to speak the word of life. So Lord, today I commission this church afresh to live under the open heaven, to live in the glory, to live in the presence of Almighty God, to know what it is to have a great communion with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And all the people shouted, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Well, amen. Well, I've discharged what I felt the Lord gave me. Now I want you to go and live under it. The Lord spoke to you about things specifically. Deal with them. Deal with them appropriately and with integrity. But live under an open heaven. Don't let anyone close the heavens for you. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Take someone out for lunch or spoil them. Go beyond McDonald's today. That would be awesome. <laughs>